Hello, this is Sabrin. Uh, I decided today to take a new habit to uh, make some videos uh, to talk about the things I'm learning uh, in the books that I'm reading because uh, I learned so many interesting things uh, that I would like to share uh, those things with the people. Actually, I have found so, so few people are really reading books, but there's so many insights inside the books that uh, I would like to, to share what I learned. Uh, for my friends, for the family, for everyone uh, who is uh, watching those videos. So, actually, today I was uh, running uh, outside, so I just ran 10 kilometers, so that's why I'm a bit uh, sweaty. <laughs> but uh, I was listening at the same time to uh, the book The Power of Habit. Uh, and this book is really awesome because I learned a lot of things about uh, how uh, habits uh, are formed and how they are impacting the life of the people. So actually, uh, habits are a bit different of uh, what I was thinking before. Before I was simply thinking that a habit is something that uh, you do over and over again. But that's not really like that. A habit is something that is actually automatic uh, and that you're, you are doing without consciously thinking about it. So basically, uh, if you can make something into a habit, it's like uh, creating an automation for, uh, for yourself about something which is really complex in your life. So, for example, you can take uh, the, the example of when you're driving a car. When you start uh, driving a car, uh, it's very complex. You have to learn a lot of things. You have to maneuver uh, the car, the levers and all these things. So it's, uh, it's difficult. But when you do that for a certain time, it becomes a habit. And then you don't think about those small things that uh, how to you know, pull the lever or how to, where to put the feet or some things. Because simply it became a habit. So it's uh, become automatic. And when something becomes a habit, your, your brain is liberated to think about other things at the same time. So which means that uh, your brain becomes able to process much more information because it processes some part of the information in the unconscious uh, parts of the brain. So this is a habit. Uh, but what is interesting is that if you build the right habits for yourself, uh, you become able to uh, create automation of, uh, of some things that create success uh, in your life. And basically, uh, what they are telling in the book is that they are some kind of destructive habits that have a rippling effect on all the things in whole life. So, for example, smoking uh, is kind of destroying all the things around uh, it. So, if you can find a way to stop smoking, uh, to stop this uh, habit, uh, this, uh, this has impact on all of the things in your life. And they're telling uh, the, the story of a very interesting story of a woman who was, uh, who was fat and has no, had no job, and one day uh, she uh, was, uh, her husband uh, left her, so uh, she became so angry that she decided to, to, to do something else, to go in another country, so she went in Egypt, and then she did a trip, and she told herself that, uh, oh, I want to do something that I never, uh, I've never done in my life, so I will cross the desert, and to cross the desert, she, uh, she believed that she had to stop smoking to cross the desert because otherwise she will not survive. So as this uh, strong goal that she had to, tr to uh, cross the desert was linked with uh, the success of this uh, thing that she wanted and she had to stop smoking to do that, she instantaneously stopped smoking. But what is interesting is that what happened after that, what happened after that is that she, um, it, this, when she stopped this habit of smoking, actually, um, uh, she started to, to do other habits which were more healthy. So she started running and she started to run marathons and she started to improve uh, her shape. She became very well uh, fit. And after that, uh, she decided to take uh, again, uh, to study again, so to go in university and take a master class uh, in computer science. And then uh, she got a really good job 
in a startup and she she was very successful so all that because she stopped smoking so uh, this is what they call in the book a keystone habit so uh, a keystone habit or uh, in other books they're calling that a small win so if you can uh, stop uh, these kind of keystone habits or if you can create one uh, which is good for you this has a rippling effect to improve all the things in your life uh, besides that so after that they went to they go to into describing what is a habit and how a habit is composed so habit is composed of three things a cue a routine and a reward so basically when you see the cue uh, you go into the routine which is automatic and at the end you get the reward uh, so you are at the beginning when you you start the habit you do that because you want the reward uh, so your brain unconsciously uh, go over the routine and when you do that sufficiently uh, a sufficient number of time uh, it becomes automatic so basically after that you just have to think uh, about the reward and uh, you th think about the, the the cue and you will associate it with the reward and that will start uh, the, the, the routine of the habit. Uh, then they are talking about how to change habits. So how to change habit, there's something called the golden rule of habit changing. So uh, it doesn't go into changing everything right away because it's impossible. But what you can do is change the routine. So if you, get, you keep the same cue and you keep the same reward, you can change the routine uh, and improve it to make people more efficient. So you can create habits which are much better than uh, the, the initial habits, and which means that you can improve habits into creating habits of success. So in the book, they give the example of this uh, uh, football coach which, uh, he, who is training uh, these players, his players to win the Super Bowl. Uh, into, so he's training to change their habits, to, to spot the right things, uh, the right move they have to do during the, the, the course. Um, so after that, um, so they, they are going to talking in a lot of other things, uh, but what I remember again is the, this keystone habit thing. So they're talking about this O'Neill, uh, this executive in the uh, Alcanoic uh, company, uh, who is uh, basically uh, taking a decision to change the security in the company uh, because the company is, uh, so he becomes the executive in the company and he, the company is not going well and he decides to uh, change something which is at the basics, at the basis of everything. So a keystone habit in the company. And this is uh, the security habits in the company. So once he changed this security habit in the company, um, all the things around are changing as well. So the people start to notice errors, uh, to improve procedures, uh, to, and to take more care about the, 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 the people in the company, to be more accountable, uh, and all these things. And finally, uh, it has a very good effect on the whole company and the whole organization uh, start to improve. So I, uh, I learned from that, that even if in a big organization you have some kind of habits, which are called routines, uh, that people are doing without really thinking about it. And if you want to uh, change uh, a company to improve uh, the, the, the process inside the company, you have to go in the change the, the keystone habits uh, to create uh, ha habits of excellence inside the company. Because habits have an impact on the values which creates the culture of the company and all the people are submitted to the culture of uh, the company. So if you create a good culture, basically you're, you will have a company who will automatically strive to create uh, better things always and always. Uh, and finally, uh, what I remember also uh, from what I, I heard today in, in this book was that um, I think to create the habit of learning, for example, uh, what uh, actually I remember from my, uh, in my perspective is that from very uh, young age, I was uh, told that if you want to play, you have to do first your homeworks. And so what I did is that unconsciously, I knew that when I go home, I do the homeworks and then I can play. So I was associating the fact that homework finished 
means that I can play. And when I did that n of time, it became a habit, and I was simply associating the thing that homeworks equal play. So uh, once the homeworks become the play, the learning becomes a game, and it just becomes fun to study. So you study automatically because you like it and because it's interesting, so you take more and more books, and you realize that uh, you learn more and more. Uh, so that's really uh, important because this is the kind of habits that you definitely wants to teach your child. Uh, because if you teach him how to learn uh, like a game, uh, actually you will not teach him, he will, you will create the habit to do that by himself, which is much more powerful than saying uh, that telling to him uh, you should study. Because you know that a kid never uh, listen to you should study or something like that. So you have to associate uh, the thing that if you want to play, you have to finish your homeworks. And this simple sentence is actually creating uh, the, the learning habit. Okay, I think that's all for today. Uh, that's a lot of things to unpack and I hope that uh, you will eventually uh, learn something from, from that. So this was uh, some of the things I learned uh, from this book, The Power Habits. Uh, there's still a lot of things to learn. I didn't really finish the book. Uh, so thank you for watching.